Hello. You guys there? Yep. Yeah. All right. Actually, Mr. Rosenthal, I had some question about the homework. Okay. Go ahead. I kind of forgot about this, but when we did this in the lesson, can you just go over this problem specifically? Yeah. Uh, just trying to find it. Nice and loud into the mic. Can you go over y equals 5x squared plus 10x plus 7? And what do you want me to do with it? Can you find the vertex of it? Oh, okay, do you want me to write this in vertex form? Okay, yeah. here we go. All right, so what I want to do is I want to factor the five out here. And get the seven out here. Okay, um, actually I want, now I want to complete the square inside of here, which is half of that squared is one. If I am adding one, I'm not really adding one to the whole right side. I'm adding one times five to the right side, which means I have to subtract it over here. Okay. Now, oh, okay, okay. now the five is there. This is a perfect square that's X plus one squared. And this just becomes plus two. You are now in vertex form. The okay, vertex. I, I didn't get why would you have negative five, so. Do you now get, or you still yeah, don't? I now get it. Oh, you get it, okay, yeah. Wait, but wait, Mr. Rosenthal, I thought we only uh, add it to the other side if it's part of our trinomial, so why is it there? The minus five? Yeah. Because I added a one here that wasn't there before. I added value to the right-hand side. Now, I didn't add one, I added five times one. Oh, right. Okay. So I have to also subtract it so that I end up netting a zero. All right. And it's 8.30, so we can start our problem. When I was uh, looking over this chapter, I'm thinking this chapter is slightly redundant. I mean, I don't want to take too long in it. I kind of want to just flow through this section here. So we, this one starts, this chapter starts with um, deriving the quadratic formula. They want to talk about real solutions, zero real solutions, one real solution, two, and what that means. So we're going to kind of briskly go through that. So we have... We have this, all right, you get the minus two here. Now, uh, assuming we've already derived the quadratic formula, we did it in a previous lesson, then you say x is equal to, when, when your function is equal to zero, then the roots solving it are gonna be uh, when x is equal to, negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a. So we already, we've been doing this. We've been doing a lot more than this. So I'm a minus and then this will all be negative, so it'll be plus eight. Nine plus eight is 17. And that has two real solutions. One is the plus root 17, and one is minus root 17 all over two. 
And the square root of 17 is real. It's irrational, but it's, it's real. Okay? Any questions about that? Remember, we're not meeting on Monday. We'll, we'll come back uh, together on Tuesday. All right? And then on June 3rd and 4th, I will be at the school site all day from the very early morning till 2 o'clock. So there won't be any uh, meetings on June 3rd and 4th. Hey, Mr. Mr. Do you know how I would get um, my locker combo if when we were going, if we went there, or is that an administration question? That's an admin question. I don't have any of that information. Uh, Mr. Huff might have that, or Ms. Huff might have that. Okay. Um, so I should contact them by email, right? Uh, you can try that. Okay. Hopefully that gets you to what you need. If you have any trouble, let me know. I'm not going to give you a lot of time for these. I mean, it's good practice for your test. I mean, it, these should start becoming, now we've done these so many times now, these should be pretty comfortable for you. And it's because you have all these tools. If you were really restricted, you can only do these problems one way, that would be a problem. But by now, you really should be seeing these things upside down, backwards, forwards, inside out, all of that. Okay. I'm going to subtract the 12x to get minus 30x, and I'm going to add the 9. Are we now allowed to use quadratic formula, Mr. Rosenthal? That's what this section is about. Oh, I see. Let's see, 900. This will actually be minus 900. This will be Isn't zero. Is this a perfect square? Uh, let's see, five and three, 15. Yes, it's a perfect square, you're right. So this could have been solved uh, easily by factoring. Okay, but I wanna show you something. Look at this stage. When the inside, is a positive number it's you have two real solutions one plus and one minus but when it comes out to zero inside then adding and one solution yeah adding and subtracting zero gives you the same one answer right so this this just comes out to three fifths so there's only one solution when what we call the discriminant the inside there comes out to zero it comes out to three fifths, as in perfect square. Mm -hmm. Five x minus three squared equals zero. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's that's one real solution. That's an example, and then the next one's going to be an example of no real solution. So inside the square root should come out negative. And they're just kind of walking us through that. We already have that. I, it's interesting the way that they decided to put this together. I feel like this should have been earlier on. But, okay. Here's this one. Go ahead and get ahead of me on that. Happy Friday, everybody. Yeah. All right. Friday. Uh, I don't like these negative x squareds. Nothing personal. I just, I'm going to move everything to the other side. Positive x squared minus 4x plus 5. Okay. And then x is equal to negative, negative 4 plus or minus negative 4 squared minus 4 times 1 times 5 over 2 times 1. 4. Okay, 16 minus 20 is negative 4. Okay, so that is 
that you can take the square root of four, but not the negative one. Okay, so you get four plus or minus two i over two, and then you get two plus or minus i. So you have two imaginary or two complex solutions. Quick, what's the absolute value? Uh, one. Oh, square root of three. It's three. No. Two. Square root of three. Ne no. One. Nope. Keep going. Square root of five. Square root of five. Two squared is four. All right, I thought you were talking about just I. No. The whole complex. Two squared is four. One squared is one. One and four is five. Square root of five is the absolute value of this. Oh, Mr. Rosenthal, if you have a negative square root. On the out, outside negative, you're just subtracting no, that value. Inside negative. Oh, yeah, then it's imaginary. Uh, can you explain the, how it's root 5 again? The absolute value of this? Yeah. Because the absolute value of a plus b i is the square root of a squared plus b squared. Where do you, where have you seen that before? a squared plus b squared equals c squared, Pythagorean theorem. Squaring, square rooting both sides is what you're, you've done. So somehow this must be the Pythagorean theorem. How did we get that? Well, you have the real direction, which is your a. You have a vector that goes in the imaginary direction. We call that bi because it goes in the imaginary direction, okay? Then you have the result of that, which is that. See the right triangle? Yes. Now, what's the i and why didn't that stay in the problem? Because i is just telling you that it's some direction in, in an imaginary direction. But that doesn't talk about the amount. The amount, the quantity is just B. That's how far along that axis you travel. So the triangle doesn't care. The triangle doesn't care what direction you went as long as it's perpendicular to the real axis, right? So then the amount that you went in the vertical direction here, how I have it shown, and the amount you go in the horizontal direction creates this right triangle. And this we said was impedance, the absolute value of that can't be negative. Right, and it's just a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So that's what we talked about that. I was just adding it in, they didn't ask for that. I'm just spiraling that back in for you guys. And you might think about doing that when you study, if you really are really trying your best to succeed and um, you need a little bit of extra confidence or you want to go back and study, from time to time, just randomly go back a section, not right before a test, but go back and, or when you're doing something and you remember, oh, we did something else with this. Go ahead and just do it and see if you remember it. And that way it, it'll, it'll get locked into your long-term memory better. Mr. Osta, mm -hmm. for the test, will there be a study guide in the similar manner to the geometry Yeah, I'm going to, this weekend, I'm going to create a review for you. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's not like before, this is all new curriculum. I don't have lessons already made, so I have to keep making them. Uh, whereas before, they were already done, and I, I could make, re I already had reviews made and everything. So now, making them from the beginning, you have to find time to do it. Okay, I'm going to skip these. Guided practice here. Okay, so this test that we're going to take actually counts for something. Oh yeah, it's going to be the last one. Yay! Yeah. I don't think we're not going to have time for anything else. I don't think, but you never know. There will be some people that might need a grade boost, and if I can, I'll try to offer something else. But I can't promise you. What do you expect the test to be? When? It, this this goes up to 410. This is 48. This is 48. It's huge though. A couple it's more true. days of this and a review and a test. So you can do the math yourself. Okay, we don't know when we finish. So you your guess is as good as mine. Okay, discriminant. 
See that in red? You guys can see my mouse. Just the red, not the square root. Just the red is the discriminant. So what we learned by going over those examples, which you probably already knew, is that if that's greater than zero, then you have two real solutions. If it's equal to zero, you have one solution. And if it's less than zero, if it's a negative number, you have only imaginary solutions or complex solutions. Okay, so you see that little chart there? So see my mouse? If the discriminant is greater than zero, now, graphically, what does that look like? Whether the parabola is upside down or right side up, opens up or opens down, it has two locations on the x-axis where it crosses, two x-intercepts, two roots. Okay? All right. And then um, here, what does it look like when the discriminant is zero? That's because what we found, there was a perfect square. When you have a perfect square trinomial, then it, the graph touches the x-axis only once. The x-axis is tangent to the graph at the vertex. Okay, so there's only one solution. And graphically, I want you to see what that looks like. 410, by the way, is doing it backwards. Section 410, I know we have to do 49 first, but in 410, I'm going to show you the graph, and you're going to come up with the equation based on the graph. Okay, so you'll be able to see how many solutions it has. Um, and then look at, look at the third one, when the discriminant b squared minus 4ac is less than zero, you have two imaginary solutions. Okay? All right. All right, so using the discriminant, look at this question. Now the question starts to change. They're not asking you to solve any. They're just asking you to find the discriminant and then say how many solutions based on it. So it's much less work. So go ahead and do A, B, and C and see if you can do it in 60 seconds. Go. What I got for the first one, two imaginary solutions. I got B squared minus 4AC came out to negative four. That means I have one positive imaginary and one negative imaginary, plus or minus, right? Trenton, turn off your video. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions about this first one? Two imaginary solutions, no real solutions. Wait, it hits the x-axis at an imaginary point? I guess so, yeah. Okay. In some other direction, perpendicular to the x-axis, it has an x component, and then it goes off in an imaginary direction. A, can you say can you say the answer is no real solutions would that be still be considered correct or should we say two? usually it is usually the way they ask it is how many real solutions you would say no real solutions but in this case the directions actually say tell me how, tell how many solutions and what type they're asking if it's real or imaginary Wait, the x intercepts aren't right, even at the same y value the what the, the x-intercepts aren't even at the same y-value. Um, I 
think they would be. One's uh, above the x-axis and one's below the x-axis. No, no, they're at the same y value. Oh, right. You're going in some other value. direction. You're going in some third direction that's not. Yeah, yeah they have different i values. Yes, uh, yes, they have different i values, but those are equidistant from the real value. They're in opposite directions along the imaginary axis. Okay, the second one, x squared minus 8x plus 16 equals 0. We have uh, b squared is 64 minus 4a is 1, c is 16. Okay, so I have this is 64, 0. So there is one real solution no questions any questions wait 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 it's 64 minus 64 and again this is called the discriminant No questions? Okay, the last one, they just moved this to 15. So it was 17, 16, 15. They just moved it down one each time. Okay, so B squared minus 4AC. 64 minus 60 is 4. So there are two real solutions based on the discriminant being positive. Because the discriminant is positive, there are two real solutions. If it's negative, would the solutions be? Two real? imaginary it's solutions. It's two. Okay. If it's zero, one real solution. This is six or two. What? These are, the roots are six and two. By the way, next school year, which is in a few months, you're going to be talking about quart, I think they're called quartic functions. X to the fourth or X to the fifth divided. And uh, cubic and quintic. And then, yeah, and then, then you'll divide that by X to the third or X to the sixth, and then and it'll descend, right? That's going to have multiple different kinds of numbers. Of, you'll, you'll have, um, you know, two real solutions and two imaginary solutions. Or you'll have uh, three real solutions and one, you know, like that. It'll look like that. Or, or will, we, will we be taught the cubic formula? Probably. A uh, cubic formula. I don't know what the cubic formula is, but. I mean, it's basically uh, the quadratic formula, but with solving cubes. Oh, I don't know anything about that. I never heard of that. Okay, I'm going to skip these. You can practice the discriminant. If you forget how to do it, you just go to that example. It's not, it's not a difficult idea. Okay, this is the stuff I like. All right, so. Oh, my God. In lesson four or five, the function height equals negative 16 T squared. And it's always going to be negative 16 because of the gravity on Earth. Plus H naught is what? Do you guys remember? Oh. Initial height. It's your y-intercept basically at time is zero. If time is zero, the whole negative negative sixteen t squared is gone. So h equals h naught at t is zero. Okay, so that's your y-intercept. Okay, was used to model the height of a dropped object. For an object that is launched or thrown, an extra term. What do you think v naught is? V sub subtext zero, that's called V naught. What do you think that is? Oh, I'm, I thought you guys knew that. Already. Velocity? Yes. Yes. And it's in the up or down direction only. We talked about that yesterday. Be careful. If your function is with respect to time, you are not discussing any horizontal change. You're only talking about vertical change. Okay. So that's, a, that's how what component of your 
object, that's its initial velocity in only the y direction, okay? V naught, okay? And that's times time, all right? So if velocity is, let's say, measured in feet per second for x amount of seconds, what happens to the seconds when you multiply V naught times T? I'll get to that in a sec. I'll come back to that. Okay, so V naught. Wait, does anyone hear oh, so the binomial form? Hold on one second. So the statement is that if it's dropped, that means that because it doesn't have an initial velocity when it's dropped, there is no additional push and it starts off at zero velocity, then it's only the acceleration that accounts for the movement of the ball. Yes. The second equation says that if it's thrown, that means there must be some initial velocity added to the acceleration beforehand. And it could be either positive or negative. Okay, if it's mm -hmm. thrown up, it's gonna be a positive V naught. If it's thrown down, it's gonna be negative and it's gonna help the acceleration, not go against it. Okay, um, so- Does anyone here know the binomial theorem? We're not doing that right uh, now. Please hold off on that. Please hold off on that. Please hold off on that. Okay, so V naught T must be added to the model to account for the object's initial vertical velocity, V naught, in feet per second. Recall that H is the height in feet. T is the time in motion in seconds, and H naught is the initial height in feet. Okay. Okay, let's see. It says V naught can be positive, negative, or zero, depending on whether the object is launched upward, downward, or parallel to the ground. Okay, so real quickly, just to mention something, we have negative 16 T squared. Acceleration is in feet per second squared times time, which is in second squared. Okay, so plus initial velocity, um, which is times t. Velocity is in feet per second. Time in one dimension is in seconds. Okay, plus some initial height. That's an initial position above zero. So that is some value that's in feet, just feet. Look at just the dimensions alone now. What happens to S squared when you multiply it times time squared? Cancels. Cancels. What does that leave you with? Feet. It leaves you with feet. Plus, what happens here in the second dimension? Time cancels again. The time cancels out with the velocity's time. And it leaves you with feet. And then you have feet. Feet plus feet plus feet is feet. It's just a certain amount of feet. And that makes sense that that's why that comes out to a height. So all of these components are there to deal with the different dimensionalities of the problem. Acceleration, velocity, Displacement. Beats. Displacement with respect to time. So if, if this is x, this displacement, then this could be dx dt, velocity. And then this would be dv dt, change in velocity with respect to the change in time. OK? All right, so you, I would just want you to understand why those components are where they are and what they're doing. When you multiply it by t squared, you're doing that so that you can find out that after s squared amount of time, then that's going to end up um, getting you some displacement. You're bringing them all back to displacement. You're bringing the acceleration, it's going to account for a certain amount of displacement after a certain amount of time squared. Your velocity that you started with is going to account for a certain amount of displacement after a certain amount of time. And of course, your starting displacement is going to be uh, counted as well. So that's what that equation is counting, okay? Okay, here we go. A juggler tosses a ball into the air. The ball leaves the juggler's hand four feet above the ground. 
and has an initial vertical velocity of 40 feet per second. The juggler catches the ball when it falls back to a height of three feet. How long is the ball in the air? Go for it. Yeah, 40 feet per second. That's mm -hmm. fast. Yeah. Don't shout out any answers. You can put it in the chat. H naught is the initial height, but then, like in this case, it's. Uh... Wait, so if it launches at four feet into the air, like, why would that be the initial height if it's. Uh, it started at four feet above the ground, is where his hand was when he threw the ball up. Uh, okay. 40 feet per second is the initial velocity. Okay. okay. We're also given the height, I think, right? You're given two different heights. You're given where it leaves and where it comes back to. Then do you plug like H for three or something? I don't know. Is that what you do? I don't know. I just... This is what I have so far. I think it's just a quadratic. Because I do want to divide by four, but like there's nothing to divide four by. There's H. So I yeah, like, don't need to divide by four. You want to know after how many seconds? Remember what happens to the t squared? It cancels out the units on your acceleration. Uh -huh. Okay, the units on your velocity are canceled out by time. So it's all feet, feet, feet. You want to know when you're, when, at what time are you going to equal three feet? When is this going to equal three feet is when you're, is what you're talking about. Well, then you're solving for. Yeah. So when you plug three in for H, that's the key. Then you got it. Now you can. When, when you have, when you have it equal to three, what does that mean? It means that the function of the ball traveling is when you, when you multiply by T squared, second squared, it turns your acceleration, which is in feet per second squared, into just feet. And it's, it's talking vertically, right? This is time. Yeah. Okay. This is your height. Over time, let's see, if you're starting at four, this is what's happening. Eventually, the ball hits the ground after a certain amount of time. They don't want to know that. They want to know the time. Here, they want to know this time. Let's call that T1. They want to know T1 when it, when it comes back down to three feet, right there. Well, the height of the ball, three, H, I plug in for H, and I will know what that is here by solving for T when, when H is three. When H is three, solving for T will tell me what this time is. Oh, okay. Okay. I knew it was three. So then I subtract the three. Okay, so now, the best way to answer the question is to find out what are they asking for? They're asking for roots. They're not asking for the vertex. So you have to think, what is the best way to do this? And you think, okay, we just were in a section here. Where we're talking about the quadratic formula. So T is equal to negative B plus or minus the square root of B squared. So 40 squared is 1600 minus four times negative 16 times one, all over 
2 times negative 16. Negative 40. Okay, so this is going to be uh, 64 positive, so 1664 over negative 32. Okay, what is the square root of 1664? Uh, it's um, 8 root 26. Is it? Uh, Mr. Russell, Let's get where, on did you, where did you get? Uh -huh. Oh, right. Let's do 1664 and find the square root of that. It's 40 points. So wait a minute. If it's just more, if it's just over 40, and I were to add that, I would have a positive value here and then a negative value here. Then when you divided, you would get a negative time. And that's because it was on the, it would have been at three feet just before, if, the, if you follow the trajectory, right? If it started at four, then if you, and that was on the, on the H axis here, and it did this, and then it was at three here after uh, this amount of time, t1. Then if you follow the parabola back, then this t, t2, will be past the h-axis. It'll land over here in the negative. But that's not what we wanna know. We wanna know what the other one is, okay? So you'll disregard the adding and we'll only do the subtracting of this. So in my calculator, I'll put the minus on there and I'll add the other, uh, negative 40, or I'll subtract, excuse me, I'll subtract 40, and I get that. And then I'm going to divide by negative 32. And I get positive 2.52. So T is approximately 2.5. But how did you get negative 4 plus or minus root 1664? Negative 40? I get negative 4. Can you scribble out the zero, didn't you? No, it's negative 40. Okay. I simplified it to negative 5 plus or minus root 26 over negative 4. Did you get two and a half seconds? No, because when I, <clears throat> when I did root 26 and subtracted 5 and divided by negative 4, I got a negative number. Did you get this? Negative 40 plus or minus 1664 over negative 32? Yeah. At one point, yes. Then I simplified to negative 5 plus or minus 26 we over negative 4. need to do 4. that. Just take the square root right away. Right? Take it away from negative 40 and divide by negative 32. Okay. You'll get two two point five two seconds, two or two point five seconds. Questions about this? Okay. There it is. They say reject the solution 0 0.025, negative 0 0.025, because the ball's time in the air cannot be negative. So the ball is in the air for about 2.5 seconds. Okay, you guys want to change that up a little bit and do it again? Suppose, not particularly. Not partic anybody need to do that one again? No. Okay. There's your homework. Four point Yay, eight. homework! See how long it is. But Okay, that one will be every, this one will be every fourth problem. Yay. So here we go. Let me write that down and show it to you. Will you be proud of us if we do every even problem? Of course. Also, is this due no. today? No, I'm not. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Let me, let, me, let me revise that. I'll be proud of you if you feel that it's beneficial and you, it's, it's work, but it's beneficial. If, if that's the case, and then you, you take the right choice instead of what's easier, then I'm proud of you. If you just do it just to do it and you already know it really well, that's it's not that I'm not proud of you. It's just that that's not what I'm talking about. He thinks you. Homework. Okay, so this is 
This will be due, due next Friday. Due next Friday, every fourth problem. Okay. All right, we're gonna move on to four nine. So it's two sections left, folks. For those of you saying, right, when's the test? When's the test? You know the deal. You've been asking me this question all school year. You know the deal. You should know the deal. Okay, here we go. So take a brain break for a second. I'm gonna pull up four nine. Four nine is gonna get interesting. It's um quadratic inequalities. So we're gonna be doing some shading now. Inequalities can get tricky, so. All right, let's look at, let me share this screen with you and then you guys can start on this problem. Anybody been on that? I've been on that. Oh, I've been, it's so I've been on the needle ride where it shoots oh. over the top. I went to the, I went to the space needle. needle. Big Shot's pretty good. It's I went to the space needle. needle. This space. Not like the best, but it's okay. They had the one. I was on the one that goes around it, that red roller coaster one, and the needle oh, one. That, when that I one. Did um, do, I didn't go on that one. That one, Big Shot. The scary, the scariest one to me was the one where they let you go towards the edge and stop you right so, at the. Like the roller coaster one that you do, like hang off. The edge yeah. of the car. It's, it's not even a roller coaster. It's just. Yeah. Yeah. I think X2, are you yeah. going backwards? It's just a yeah. rail car that goes straight to the edge. X2 is well, kind of lame. X2 is not even in the same state. I lost my shoe on X2 and now I hate it. <laughs> <laughs> I love X2. X2. My shoe flew <laughs> off. <laughs> I never like. I had to carry his shoes. And then he almost lost them. Take, take I, lost, I, I lost my hat on Goliath. Like my, my hat flew away on Goliath, but I still I like it. I thought, I thought you said cat. All right, all right, folks, here we go. Go, do this problem. It's no, cat. yeah, my, my cat flew David, off. David, all right, here we go. The Stratosphere Tower in Las Vegas is 921 feet tall. It has a needle at its top that extends even higher into the air. A thrill ride called the Big Shot catapults riders 160 feet up the needle and then lets them fall back to the launching pad. Okay, let's just focus on A. The height H and feet of a rider on the big shot can be modeled by, okay, it looks like you're starting at 921 as the launching pad. They're not telling you the initial velocity. And T is the elapsed time in seconds after launch and V naught is the initial vertical velocity in feet per second. Find V naught using the fact that the maximum value of H is 921 plus, oh, so they shoot you up an additional 160 feet. Okay, so go ahead and just figure out A right now. They wanna know what the initial velocity must have been to do that. Now you're learning stuff in order to find the initial velocity. Now you guys are doing stuff that would be useful at NASA, you know, ro you know in rocketry. What do, you, what do you need your velocity to be to uh, slip the box of You Earth? need to, to be at least escape velocity. What was, the, what was the phrase that they in history that they said, slip the bonds of Earth and touch the, touch the face of God or something like that? What did he say? I'll look it up right now. Slip, slip the box. If, uh, if they don't provide us the amount of time it takes to get to the top of the ride, then how do you calculate the velocity? Because you need the amount of time. And can you, you, can, you can use the, the, you can use, you can use the, 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 the equation. Hold on, I'm gonna look up this saying and then- Oh wait, the height H, no. But one moment, if you only know the height, but you don't know velocity, you don't know time either. You don't know how long it you takes. You can find to velocity go. by f figuring out um, how much it would take to get you to the top of that tower. Well, but if you have H and you, you don't, you, if you have H, but you do not have T, then how do you solve for V0? 
small you can um i don't know in terms of tea but uh they keep so coming up well. with gillespie gillespie john gillespie oh i have slipped the surly bonds of earth and danced the skies on laughter silvered wings sunward i've climbed and joined the tumbling mirth that's not what i'm looking for Surprised that didn't come up. Slip the bonds of earth and touch. Yeah, and touch the face of God. That's what it was. The crew of the space shuttle Challenger honored us by the manner in which they lived their lives. We will never forget them this morning as they prepared for their journey and waved goodbye and slipped the surly bonds of earth to touch the face of God. That was a famous quote. All right, let's now think about this problem. So we have H equals negative 16 T squared plus V naught T plus 921. Now, we want to know when the height reaches. Negative 16 T squared plus V naught T equals 160. Wait, say that again? Negative 16 T squared plus V naught T has to equal 160. Oh, you're just getting rid of the 921. Yeah. I'm putting, okay, so what I'm doing is this. I'm putting H to be 1081, which is going to give me the same thing when I subtract 921. Mm hmm Okay, so find V not using the fact that the maximum value of H is 921. 1081, but just get rid of the 921 and you have 160. Were you guys able to find V not? You have to have enough velocity to get up to 160. Oh. But wait a minute, you, that's its maximum height. It's going to reach a maximum at that. So maybe it's we, a problem. can we what find is, the maximum? I believe I have V zero in terms of T, I think, maybe. If you subtract 921 from both sides, it would be back to the statement that David made. Then you could just find V0 in terms of T. Then you'd substitute back into the equation and cancel out the T's. Let's try this. Plus V naught T plus 160, or minus 160. Well, maybe you don't want the minus 160. So maybe we want the 160 on the other side. And maybe I think the 160 on the right side is fine. I'm going to add the 16t squared to the other side. Plus 6, 160 divided by t equals v naught. T can't be zero. Um, so this is an interesting thing. So if, if that's what we're getting for v naught, I wonder if that's what they're looking for. Can you shut the camera down a little bit? Oh yeah, sorry. Thank you. I think I would this work if uh, if you did a uh, negative 16 t squared plus v zero t equals 160, then you divided both sides by t. And then you would uh, then you would add. I want to this, look at this maximum point. Is what I want to examine. The coordinate of it. I know the y coordinate of that is one. 
You all then find the derivative set at equal to zero. I need that. I need how much time before it reaches that vertex. I know that this is at negative V naught over negative B over 2A, right? Negative oh, Mr. Ostal, if you take the if you take the derivative, then v v zero and negative thirty two t are in the same statement, and then you can just solve for v zero. Wait. Oh, and simply I to take it take over two a, then I get I get that this is v naught over thirty two, but it's still not a, a value. Mm, for that, you could just use. Oh, so I have to be able to plug, I can plug this in for T. I should be able to plug this in for T. That should be the time, that should be the time at which I reach that, right? So let's, let's make sure we do that again. Remember that at the maximum point, it's at negative B over 2A. So negative B, the B term is V naught over two times A. So I was, I think I'm right here. Negative over negative is positive V naught over 32. That is the value that, that is the X value, or in this case, the T value at which we reach our maximum height that we know of 1081. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna plug this in for T Where do I want to plug it in? I want to plug it in, I guess here. All the, to all because the this is when my height is one, when 1081, when I subtract it. I, so if I plug, if I plug V naught over 32 in here, this is what I'm going to get. Negative 16 V naught over 32 squared plus V naught times T, I, which I said is V naught over 32 minus 160 equals zero. Okay, now what is that gonna look like? It's gonna be zero. This is negative 16 V naught squared over 32 squared. But if I have 32 times 32, I can take a 16 out here and a 16 out here. So that will give me negative V naught squared over 64, can you guys see? Uh-huh. Plus, what happens here? V naught times V naught is V naught squared. I think this is working. V naught squared over 32. This is V naught squared over 32, but I wanted to have a common denominator with this. So I'm gonna make it two V naught squared over 64 minus 160. I'm about to get it, guys. Okay. That was great. Okay. And now I add these together. This is take away one V naught squared from two V naught squared. It's just V naught squared over 64 minus 160 equals zero. I'm going to actually bring this up here. Add 160 to both sides. Okay. Is equal to V naught squared over 64. Multiply by 64 on both sides. Okay. Get out the calculator and then take the square root. And I think I have V naught and we can check it. Okay, so here we go. 64 times 160, 10,240. Oops. And that's equal to V naught squared. And then I'll take the square root. And I get 101.19. And that, sure, Mr. that would be my initial velocity in feet per second. Wait, uh, Mr. Rosendahl, can you go sure. over it again after the 16t squared plus 160 over t? Wait, say that again? Can you go over all the steps again? Of course, yes. 
Okay, but let's check it. I don't want to go over it if I'm wrong. Okay, if that is the case, if you plug this number in for V naught back into our original one, does it work? Um, the only you know, the only way to really need to check it is to do negative b over two a. If, if that is equal to two seconds, if um that is equal to two seconds, as it states in the in number b in no not number b letter b, and then you did it correctly. If not, then you didn't do it correctly. Okay, but let's okay let's go over what I did so far because I think this is right. It looks right. I don't see that nobody saw anything I violated. Right. I didn't violate any rules. Okay. No, but I think there are better methods to try. Yeah, well, let, let's see if you can discover them. Okay, so first, here's our function. We started off 921 feet at the launch pad above ground. We don't know our initial velocity that we're going to thrust the, the ride upward. Okay, here's your gravity. Okay, now they tell us it's going to go to a height of 1081. Okay, so I plug that in for H. I wanted to know how many seconds later on, I'm gonna to need to know how many seconds it takes to reach that. But I don't know my initial velocity. So to solve for that, what I did is I got everything, I got the 1081 over there, and so it's zero. And then what I thought of is for this equation, I know that in this graph of it, that maximum point, I know the Y coordinate of it, and I know the X coordinate is at negative B over two A. Okay, and let's get rid of this because I did not use that. I don't want anything that I actually didn't use. Okay, so negative B over 2A, I plug in, here's B, plugged it in, 2, A is negative 16 right there. Simplified that to V naught over 32. There it is. Okay, that is the X coordinate that must give me that Y coordinate at the maximum. Okay, and we've talked about negative b over 2a. You learned that with Mr. Knauss as well. So that should be familiar. Negative b over 2a is the x-coordinate of the vertex. Okay, now that I have that, I should be able to plug that in for time, not for, its, not for v naught. That is that because this is graphed height with respect to time. So the x-axis, that x-coordinate is time. That is the key, knowing that that's time and that's height after that much time. So then I plugged it in for T. So negative 16, I'm gonna plug it in right there. There you see it, squared, plus V naught, I don't know, but I'm plugging in what I got here, negative V over 2A for T. There, V naught, right there, minus the 160. Then I simplified it down. I squared it, got a common why was it the, the first time you substituted it, why was it V naught? Over 32, and then the second time it was 16 over 32. No, that's V naught. Yeah, uh, I made that mistake too until he called it out as V naught. That's V naught. Okay. So that gives me V naught squared over 32. This gives me V naught squared over 32 squared, but it's times negative 16. So it was just 32. Well, what I did is I wrote it out as 32 times 32 and canceled out a 16 with one of them. Then I could just do 2 times 32 is 64. Okay, and it was negative. Okay. Right? Then I got a common denominator of 64 here and then added it to this one. So it left me just V naught squared over 64 minus 160 equals zero. I added 160 to both sides and then multiplied by the denominator 64. And then I got V naught is equal to 10,240. Took the square root of both sides. I got 101.19. So you added a negative 160 to where the zero is? I added 160 on both sides. Okay. And then see it here. Then I multiplied by the denominator 64 on both sides. Interesting. Why is it square root? And I got V naught, my initial velocity. Is it correct, Mr. Rosenthal? I think so. It looks correct to That's me. That's fast. 
Why is um, 2v not um, squared over 64? Well, look over here. This is what I plugged in, the v not over 32. You plugged it in for t squared, so you had to square it, right? So you got v not squared. On the bottom, it's 32 squared. But look how I wrote 32 squared, 32 times 32. And there was a negative 16 on the numerator. I canceled the 16 out with one of the 32s. Right? When you divide a 16 out of 32, you're left with a 2. 2 times 32 is what gave me the 64. So it, it applies to the, to, the, to the other one too? This one I got by taking the V naught times the T that I got there. V naught times V naught over 32 is V naught squared over 32. So if I multiply by 2 on top and bottom, I get 2 v naught squared over 64. And the purpose of that was to get a common denominator. So I. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Anybody else? Okay, I'm going to erase this and I'm going to keep my 101.19. So I have v naught is about 101.19, and that's velocity, so that's going to be feet per second. Oh my God, we're almost out of time. We're three minutes away. Three minutes remaining. I gotta, I gotta stop with the juice. Oh, wait. So now, write down that 101.19 as your initial velocity and reset your equation now using that instead. So it says a brochure for the big shot states that the ride up the needle takes two seconds. Wait, was it correct? Sorry to interrupt, but was it correct? I, I don't know. They, this is not a teacher's edition that I have. I didn't, look like I didn't, I didn't get that. Um, when you do, um, you have V naught over 32 is equal to two seconds, sorry. Um, and then you find out what V naught is because um, that, then it's, it's not 101 point whatever. It's just six. What did you get? Let's what? What did you get? Let, let's do the problem. Here we go. What did so you get, Sig? It says two seconds, right? It claims two seconds. What did you get, Sig? Okay. And what I'm saying is that um, the, um, if you compare the times together, it looks, it doesn't fit properly. Well, but what did you get? Hold on. H? I believe Mr. Rosenthal that that should be correct, but it doesn't look like it is. All right, hold on. So it says here, we want to use H is equal to negative 16 T squared plus 101.19 T minus, oh, oh excuse me, um, plus 921. And then you want to replace the H because you want to get to the height of 1081. And that should come out to two seconds. To check it, you plug in two seconds. Just check your solution. So here, this would be 2 squared is 4. So this would be negative 64. 2 times that. So I have the 101.19 times 2 gives me 202.38 plus the 921. So I'm going to add the 921 and I'm going to subtract 64. And I got 1059. So I got close. Now, the brochure, so then it says discuss the model's accuracy. Why do you think that they say that? Why would they say that? If, was the regular me if it was going to come out exactly, then why would they even throw in a question saying discuss the model's accuracy? So what you're going to say is... Air resistance, I think, right? Yeah. Yeah, so I don't think we're wrong. We're correct, okay? So this, this is correct. It's, it's, you know, you're 21 feet off, right? You're 21 feet off, all right? So I think then they, then they bring in that question, discuss the model's accuracy. Why would, why would the math be one thing and the brochure says another thing? Because... It might not always be working at full capacity, wind. Well, if I were to solve this, what time should it take? 
how would you solve it? You would use the quadratic formula. It's going to come out to about two seconds. Do you think in a brochure they're going to want to say that it gets there in 2.1 seconds or 2.132 seconds? <laughs> two seconds. Sounds they're just going to say two seconds in the brochure. The brochure is not going to be perfect. The math is perfect. The brochure is not perfect. Okay. I'm sure, it's just for advertising. Mr. Rosenthal, if um if it is correct, and how come what um when you if you check it via um the um yeah. quadratic formula, you not over thirty two is equal to t, you the um negative b over two a, um how come when you check that it doesn't work? Uh, it should since we got it from that. So one hundred one point nine is the b. So negative 101.19 over 2a gives you uh, I thought it was 32, not 64. Oh, sorry. It was this. Yes. OK, so this is going to be positive 101.19 over 32. OK, that will be, I'll look, do that right now, 101.19 divided by 32 is this number, okay? If that is your, that is the, that is three seconds actually. That gives you a three seconds is when no, it- No, it makes no sense. It's not that it doesn't make sense, it's that that's, that's the difference between the brochure, what the brochure is saying, and what is actually happening. So three seconds makes a big enough difference to go from 1081 to 1034.38? Yes, and I'll tell you why. Because you're getting slower and slower due to gravity. So in that last second, you get that hang time, right? You're not, you're not, it, it, you reach that maximum point in that amount of time. So in that, that little bit, you're going actually, you're approaching a zero speed, right? So as you're going that slow, you're not getting much more for your time in, in height. That would explain that. Right? As you're getting close to that maximum point, you slow down and come back down, right? Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. So that's why they wanted the discussion on accuracy for that reason. It, it, it's a math discussion on accuracy. Dismissed, everybody. Great job. Thank you, Thank Mr. You, Mr. Rosenthal. Rosenthal. That was a good problem. Mr. Rosenthal, I have a question. Wait, so what's the binomial theorem anyway? Hey, somebody was saying, Mr. Rosenthal, I have a question. So let's go ahead. Uh, it, it's saying. about the homework. So David, go ahead. Okay, so what no, is no, the binomial no. theorem? I think it's uh, a plus b to the power of n equals, uh, well, something like a plus b to the power of n equals. N equals a to the n a, plus a, a to the n, n times, times a to the n minus one plus a to the n n n common plus times b to the. They do it with um. Times b to the. So what to was the b it to the one? Stuff? I think. So this is. What uh, what is it? A. Is it a plus b? Or a minus b, a to the n minus one, or are they just saying a to the n plus a to the n minus one b plus a to the n minus two b squared dot 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 all the way to you get to plus a squared b to the n minus two, so it switches, plus a to the b to the n minus one, plus b to the n. I believe that's right. Look it up. Yeah, I, I think that's it, yeah. But there, there's different forms of it. They also have combinatorics. So we're um, all right with the n k thing. Yeah, where you're getting your your coefficients through um, combinations, which is picking picking a certain number from a set of numbers, and uh, that that's another thing we could have worked on. You know, it's you know you learn your factorial formulas for that. You know, n factorial over 
n minus k factorial times k factorial, you know, that kind of thing. Something like that. Any other questions, guys? Uh, yes. So okay. my question was, how would you solve a 3p squared plus 7 equals minus 9p squared plus 4? That? Yeah. Okay. Uh, maybe add 9p squared. Yeah. So, and you get 12. Okay. And then subtract 7. Yeah, 12p squared equals minus 3. Take the square root. Okay. You can treat this as. Um, can you break it up into. Uh, yeah. And wait a minute. So plus or minus one half i. Uh huh. Hmm. One moment. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Anybody else have any questions? No? All right, I'm going to end session then. Thank you, Mr. Rosenthal. Hey, oh, wait, wait, wait. Thank you, Mr. Rosenthal. Have a good day. See you next week. See you Tuesday. Bye. 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 Celine, are you still there? You are. Ask questions. Phone a friend. Get help. I'll have a review out sometime this weekend. Come to office hours and ask questions on how to do this stuff. Yes, Emmanuel, you were right on the quote. Yes. Oh, Emmanuel, you had a question. How did I get A and B? Do you still have that question? Okay, what was it for, for that last problem? Was it for the roller coaster problem up at the needle? Uh, oh, the juggler problem. Let me see. Oh, that was in the last lesson. Okay, hold on. Let me come out of that one. Let me go back to 4.8. Okay, going to 4.8. That was at the end of 4.8. Juggler problem, there we go. Okay. Let me actually bring that up for you here. I'll do it this way. So give me one second. That was in 1 second it's pulling up right now there it is okay so now let me share that with you okay so here a juggler tosses a ball into the air the ball leaves the juggler's hand four feet above the ground and has an initial velocity vertical velocity of 40 feet per second so look at how they set up the equation. See my mouse? Here's the four feet where my mouse is. Here's your 40 feet per second where your initial velocity is in the upward direction. 
And then you want to know when the height reaches three. So they put three in red here for H. Then look at what they do on the next step. They subtract three on both sides. So then the four becomes a one. They plug it into the quadratic formula. And when you simplify it down, when you do plus or minus, you get these two values. You don't want the negative 0 0.025 value because that's time back in the past, which doesn't exist. Um, and then the 2.5 is 2.5 seconds after the juggler throws the ball. Now, does that help you? Wait a minute, where did my, oh, stop share. Okay, good. Does anybody else want to go over anything? Lawrence, Tiela, anything? No, I'm good. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you. Have a good weekend. Lawrence, anything? Lawrence, are you there? All right, I'm going to end session.